today, I'll be building a rustic farm bed for the cabin. The logs I'm using to make the bed were harvested last year from these curved cedars. Now that they've had time to season, they're ready to run through the sawmill. The footboard is shaping up nicely. All it needs now is a good backboard, and I know just the lumber for it. Twenty-five years ago, my dad and grandfather felled some black cherry trees, which they then milled into lumber. My dad took his share of the lumber and stored it in a woodshed on the old homestead, which is where it is to this day. He always wanted to do something special with it, and in fact he did. He used some of the black cherry to make rocking horses for his grandkids, but the majority of the lumber is still there.
When I arrived at the old homestead, I met up with my uncle and grandfather, who were there to fill in the century-old hand-dug well. So I stayed to give them a hand. I've spoken about this well before, in a previous episode, and I even lowered a camera into its depths. Although it was a shame to fill in, it had to be done. The cover was beginning to rot, which would make falling in all too easy. We could always build a new cover, but it too will rot in time, and we might not be around to replace the next one. Eventually, the well will pass from all memory, which could prove disastrous for some poor soul or creature who happens unwittingly upon it. The safest thing to do is fill it in. But we'll save the cast iron hand pump, which is as old as the well itself. We began by pulling the pump and piping out. Chunk of wood. What was that chunk of wood before? Is that a filter? Yeah, they must have hammered it in there. Yeah, but that's where the water intake is. Well, there's holes here. Oh, okay. So that's just the cap on the bottom. Then over the next day and a half, we hand loaded 17 tons of field stone into the tractor bucket and dumped it down the well. I'd say the gentleman running the tractor, my grandfather, is doing quite well for someone who's in their hundredth year. Finally, we topped it off with three feet of topsoil. Now that the well had been crossed off our list, it was time to return to the cabin to finish the bed. After stopping off at the woodshed, I loaded up the heirloom lumber and hand pump. At some point, I'd like to refurbish the hand pump and put it back into service. I then began a slow but scenic journey back to the cabin.
With the main bulk of the bed now in the loft, I decided to return the following day to put it all together. Over the last few days, I've had a series of peculiar encounters with what I believe is a kind of wolf, but I'm not sure. I did manage to capture some footage of it, so I'd love to know your thoughts. Several days ago, I was walking into a clearing when I saw, just on the other side of a rise, an animal moving into the clearing with me. At first, I could only see its back, which had a reddish tan coat. Right away, I assumed it was a fox. However, it was triple the size of any fox I'd ever seen. Then, as it rose into full view before me, we locked eyes. I realized then that it must be a large coyote, but it was no coyote that I'd ever seen before. All the eastern coyotes in my area have smoky gray, dusty brown, and even whitish fur, with a little bit of red mixed in sometimes. But this one had a solid tan coat, except for a white face and neck. To be fair, I've never seen a wolf with this kind of coloring either. The second thing that I found odd about this coyote was how brazen he was. Although I've seen wolves in the open before, I've never seen a coyote cross a clearing in broad daylight, since they usually take great pains not to be seen at all. After staring at each other for about a minute, he moved to the other side of the clearing. It was at that point I grabbed my camera and took this footage of him. I've since named him Tintin. I figure that he must be some sort of wolf hybrid. But if he were to be a coyote wolf cross or koi wolf, that still wouldn't explain his coloring. He could be a wolf dog hybrid, I suppose, but I'm just not sure. Maybe he's just a coyote with rare coloring. Stranger still, I've now run into Tintin a total of four times over the last few days, each time in the open, and he always knows that I'm there. Typically, coyotes and wolves are always on the move, patrolling large sections of wilderness. From the tracks that I've seen over the years, it usually takes them about a week to complete a full circuit of their territory. However, it's obvious that Tintin has chosen to stay put, preferring to keep to the clearings that happen to be nearest the cabin. Again, this is very odd behavior, and I'm not exactly sure what to make of it. Let me know your thoughts. Anyway, I returned to the cabin the following day to finish the bed.
Well, the bed is complete and it turned out really well. It turned out even better than I expected it would. And uh, that's because as I was beginning to build this bed, I had the design in mind, but I wasn't sure exactly how I was gonna make it all work. All I knew was that I wanted to use these curved pieces of cedar. I wanted to incorporate the cherry that my dad had been saving and to use the wagon wheel in the footboard. Uh, so first of all, yeah, I, I used these curved pieces of cedar, which I had been saving for over a year. Uh, there are these beautiful curved cedar logs that I harvested and I, I let them season for a while. I just took that time to think about how I was going to use them. Uh, some people suggested that I could use them as a curved front porch and I was really tempted to do that. But the problem with these cedar logs is that they not only curve this way, but they had a twist to them. So that's why I thought about using them in a bed. And now that they're in the footboard and the headboard, I couldn't imagine them anywhere else. They look perfect where they are. And uh, I know my family's gonna be super excited to, to see it in here because really this is the first piece of furniture for the cabin. And I'm hoping to, to bring in some more furniture and to build some more things uh, to make this more of a comfortable, livable space before Christmas. Uh, we'll see if I can do that. But anyway, uh, for the treatment of the wood, I use boiled linseed oil. So in case you're wondering, that's what it is. I brushed on some boiled linseed oil and then I wiped off the excess. And uh, it's great for preserving the wood, for keeping a nice warm wood tone, and uh, as well, it's easy to reapply. So in a couple years, if I want to reapply the oil, uh, that's no problem. I can brush on some more and wipe off the excess. Initially, I was thinking about using polyurethane, but the thing about that is when you want to do another coat or reapply several years later, you'll have to sand down that first coat to do the, the reapplication. So uh, it becomes much more tedious and difficult. So that's why I stuck with the boiled linseed oil. It's natural, looks great, and it's easy to maintain over the years. As for the really comfy, cozy bed set that you see here, I picked it up from Bass Pro. And to be honest with you, it's a little tempting to, to take a, a nap in it right now because the weather is perfect. It's this nice, cool autumn air. It's a great time to take a nap, but uh, I've still got too much to do. So I'll have to wait for another day. Anyway, that's it for now. Thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Until next time, my friends, stay safe, be well, and God bless.